Well, so but, there, there are two things there it, in that there's one, the network doesn't have the block space uh, to actually allow everyone the time to do that. But is there a secondary thing in that block space could get so expensive that somebody who wants to come in and start buying $100 a, a week or a month, yeah, even if they want to consolidate those UTXOs over into a hardware wallet, it's going to be too expensive on the fees. Like if we yeah. are edging out low, you know, the people who can only because f- we, we yeah. hear it. So I've, you, I, tra- you know, I travel a lot with this. And, yeah, sure. You know, I've been out to uh, places where people yeah. they don't have much money. And yeah, say, if you're well, in Lebanon or Argentina, yeah. I know you've been there. So, so people are like, well, they should save a dollar, five dollars. You know, swap a can of coke. It's like it's all well and good, but you know, if they can only do five dollars and the cost of uh, a transaction is ten dollars, they they can't do it. And so the only thing, which by the way, it's still a question I've not had properly answered for me. Are we going to head to a world where a lot of people don't have UTXOs? They are, uh, they're getting onboarded onto the Lightning Network. And can they be self-sovereign on the Lightning Network? Because they're really sharing someone's UTXO. So yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's some big questions here to answer. Yeah. Uh, well, I can answer part of it, I think, yeah. which is I believe only something like Lightning will allow the world to get a taste of Bitcoin. Mm. The good news is I, they're in the, I would still consider them in the ecosystem. Um, but with, are they sovereign? But they don't have that level of sovereignty. That's mm. correct. And, and, you know, I think that's why you have, you have people like, like what's happening with Fetty and, you know, Fetty Mint trying to create some form of comfort um, with, it's the like custody. Commu- that's like a kind of community sovereignty. Community, community custody. Um, which is, which but, is that community sovereignty then? Do you become sovereign as a community, but not an individual? Because that's a, I, I hadn't heard that expression. I think that's I, a good way to look at it. I just made it up now. Yeah. Well, it, it might stick because I think that's what you did. I mean, the base layer is the base layer for a reason, and it's not replicable at these other at these other levels. It's the only place in the world. I mean, that has this, right? I mean, it's, it's Satoshi's unique creation. It's very limited, though. And, and I believe the, when we look at the block size wars and the things that happened, the, the right thing happened. Mm-hmm. I believe that. But there are ramifications to it, and that's that not everybody can live on the base layer. Even people like us, I think, will. I interact with it fairly regularly right now, um, and you may too. But... As time goes by, it'll probably become less frequent because of these fees. Um, it, it. I know what you mean. So I've started to think about how I need to kind of disem- like spread out my Bitcoin custody. Yeah. You know, we. I think most people thinking to, in terms of levels, it's like the majority of my stacks deep cold storage multi sig. I then will have. Uh, the stuff I may want to use on a week by week basis in a single SIG hardware wallet, and then there's some like day to day travel money that goes in a Lightning wallet, yeah. and, and and there's some mixtures of those. But I have started to think about scenarios whereby maybe that middle one gets wiped out because that is a base chain hardware wallet, yeah. and that needs to go into some kind of either collaborative custody or side chain or somewhere where I can. Move it around without even thinking about it. I think Feddy is. I didn't get Feddy at first, and and I think when I first heard about Feddy, for me it was meant to be solving this issue of people, you know, in communities who ha- wanted a custody and maybe didn't have the technology. Actually, I think it's solving the problem of people n- being priced out of owning UTXOs. Yeah, I think that's a bigger problem that needs solving, um, and it, but it does mean some form of community sovereignty. And yeah. we don't understand how the rules of that really will work. And will someone try and rug their community? And how we prevent that? That is like a whole new era we have to go through. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, if I was a, a young person wanting to be involved in Bitcoin, I think that's where I would probably go focus. I would say, hey, how, how do I go solve this problem of the fact that, you know, we have right, right now, we know there's about 50 million addresses that have some level of Bitcoin value in it. So even if all 50 million were associated with a person, we know that's not true, but 
bear mm-hmm. with me. You know, we're dealing with what is that number? It's like 015 percent of the world's population is working on the base layer right now. And we're essentially full. <laughs> so, yeah. And so we're running a 200,000 unit backlog and fees have spiked to 0.75 just on a little ordinals craze, right? It didn't take much. So, so this is imperative. I mean, the, the people doing work at Lightning and, and whether it's, you know, different non-custodial wallets or, or Lightning LSPs or Fedi or, you know, Liquid or like all these things, I think, perform an important function in the ecosystem. And people are going to have to get comfortable with them. I know um, I said before I'm a maxi. Some people might say, well, you're not a back maxi, Bob, because you're not telling everybody that they can or that they should go store everything on the base layer. But I'm just dealing with the mathematical reality that that's not possible. Why, do you, th- why do you think people aren't talking about this as much? It seems to be a, a like an elephant in the room, a blind yeah. spot that people have. Because me and Danny have talked about this a bunch of times. We we keep saying, like, keep it in the question out there. Can you be self sovereign on the Lightning Network? And we always come back to the fact that you can't. You can't. Well, you can't really be, can you? No, you can't. And cannot. so, if you can't be, that there is a like a reality here that we cannot have eight billion self sovereign Bitcoiners. Correct. So then, if if you come to that conclusion you accept that then i think you have to come to a reality that well what are we building here i think we are rebuilding the financial system on bitcoin it, it's, it will be better but there will still be trusted custody solutions maybe it's a multi-party custody but we're, we're building something therefore it's the same but different it's better yeah. because we have 21 million we're fixed so we don't yeah. have the theft we Correct. don't have the debasement yeah but we still will have trusted yeah. third parties. Yeah, that's the reality. And like you said, why is nobody talking about it? I mean, it's partly why I, I gave that speech at Bitblock Boom and I've started to try to say this is because, frankly, I wasn't seeing anybody else doing it. Like, hey, I think this is an issue that has to be addressed. And, and at least, I shouldn't say addressed, because it is the architecture of the system. I shouldn't mm. say it's even an issue, right? It's just the reality of what we have. And there was a choice that was made. Like, so what we, what we maintain is an option for self-sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, and only the architecture we have allows that. And, and the architecture right now says that, one, the mining industry will continue to have enough uh, revenue to create and maintain a secure network. But number two, it's only this architecture that allows individuals to run nodes. Because go back to the block size war, well, what could we do? Well, we could make bigger blocks, but it very quickly accelerates into nodes not being something that people can have. So, well, but but also the, when you discuss the scarcity of block space, the scarcity of block space allows the fees to cover for the drop that we're going to see in the block reward. If we didn't Correct. have a scarce block space, yeah, I mean that's not a hundred percent true because there's a chance maybe you double the block space and therefore you double the transactions and so you get more in there at a lower price. I mean, yeah. I don't know mathematically if that would work out. It doesn't really, I, I played this in my head, and I think that things will happen. Okay, we'll figure out ways to be more efficient on transactions. Yeah. So the 150 million I talked about, it might turn into 400 million or 600 million, but it doesn't, it, it's not going to be 8 billion. It's, or, and even 8 billion isn't enough, by the way. 8 billion transactions enough annually is not enough for a hyper Bitcoinized hyper Bitcoinized, Bitcoinized world to exist. Like at the base layer, we would need a multiple of that. So it's not going to happen. Um, the miners are going to be motivated exclusively by these fees. Hmm. But I think one thing to think about is when we use the word subsidy, most of the time, I think we leap to the conclusion that Satoshi put the subsidy in for the miners. 
But I believe it was broader, that it was a subsidy for all of us. So we could think of the first 15 years of Bitcoin as an introductory period where keeps fees low. it keeps fees low and, and, and uh-huh. it's got us to this adoption level. And so it's like, um, I gave this example once. I said, um, I don't know if you had this in uh, where you grew up, Peter, but when I was a kid, um, they had the record of the month club. And so in the back of a magazine, you could pick like 12 albums for a penny and then you had to buy one every month for like sixteen dollars. Yeah, right. We had similar. Yeah, I mean they kind of did it with CDs as well. So we yeah. had a thing called Britannia. I don't know if you know this, but like yeah. you would subscribe and you could pick four or five to begin with or yeah. six, whatever, yeah. and you get them in the post immediately. Yeah, every month you bought one. Yeah, I had the yeah, same. and it was it was exciting, right? Like, like yeah. I, I'm a, I know you're a music person. Yeah. I'm a music person. Like I would get this package with all these. You know, first it was albums, then it was CDs, but it was very exciting. But then the reality would set in like, hey, I got to, as a teenager, like, hey, I got to cough up like 15 bucks a month to buy this other thing. Now, in total, it was still a pretty good value Mm. and I was happy I did it. But the first 15 years of Bitcoin were like that introductory period, Mm. you know, that, and it's about over. Now, is it over next Tuesday? Maybe not, but I have a feeling it's over in the next year or so that in the, in the next epoch, in this next having cycle, I think it will be over, and I think the fees, the fees will start skyrocketing. Now, at some point, I think they will become face melting. Now, not necessarily in that epoch, but with BlackRock ETFs and all these people hopefully onboarding, it will dramatically change the landscape of fees. But it has to because, you know, the subsidy. Has dropped by 95, 96 per, oh, 94%. Excuse me. Mm. The subsidy will have dropped from the original in Bitcoin terms by 94%.